All right, so you've got the ability to make your enemy attack and deal damage, but at the moment it just isn't looking right. We need some knockback effect. So in this video, we'll set things up so the enemy can calculate the direction of the player, apply a nice little bit of force, and we'll also create the opportunity in which the player can dodge if he's quick enough evading the attack altogether. Let's get started. All right, so to make this work, we are gonna need to head into our player movement script. The reason we're doing it here is because this script already controls the player's velocity. And if we try to control velocity in a different script, the two will fight each other, constantly overwriting one another. So this is where we're gonna begin. To get the ball rolling, let's go down to the bottom and create a public void called knockback. This will be public as the enemy will need to talk to it. And the player's gonna need some information, specifically, where the attack is coming from. So let's pass in the enemy's transform. Now there's two things we'll need to do in here. The first is going to be to actually disable the player's movement during the knockback, and then secondly to actually knock him back. So let's head up to the top where we can create a private bool called is knocked back. Then in our update method, we'll take all of this logic that controls our inputs and movement, and we'll just see that it only happens if is knocked back equals false. We'll then just put that into brackets. Now later on we'll make this much cleaner and refactor it a little bit with some states, but that's coming up later and for now we're just going to do it this way. So now all we need to do to take control away from the player is simply say is knocked back equals true. Now that we've disabled the player's movement, we can apply a force knocking him back. To do this we're just going to calculate the difference between the player's position and the enemy's. So we'll make a vector2 called direction. This is just going to be equal to the transform.position so that'll be the player, minus enemy dot position. Now that we've got a direction, we can apply the force. So we'll just say rigid body dot velocity equals direction. Now, of course, this is gonna be a very weak force at this point, and we've got more work to do, but let's head over to our enemy combat where we can trigger this, and then we can at least do an early test. So in our enemy combat, we're just gonna come down into this attack method where we check for a player and then when we find a player, we find the player health script and deal damage. We're going to do the exact same thing, except instead of looking for player health, this time we will look for player movement, and we're just going to call the knockback method. At this point, we'll pass along the enemy's transform in order to help the player calculate the direction. That's all we need to be able to run a simple test. And now as we go in, you can see I got a little bit of velocity when the enemy first hit me, and I just keep going forever. So it's messy, but I do lose control and the enemy is sort of knocking me back. In order to improve this, let's go back to enemy combat. And at the top right under our weapon range, we're gonna make another public float. This one we'll call knockback force. We'll then just make sure to pass along that knockback force value when we deal damage. Don't worry about that red line, we'll fix that right away. In our player movement script then, we can just set up knockback to accept a float, and I'll just call it force here because it's easier. We'll then just multiply our direction times force when we actually deal the knockback. Now one other little thing we're going to do is just take this direction, let's put it in brackets and go dot normalized. All this does is set both the x and y value to a magnitude of 1, meaning it can't be larger than 1. This keeps our direction from passing in really large numbers, which can get multiplied by our force, creating strange knockback amounts. This will keep our force really regular while still allowing us to get the correct direction. Back in Unity, don't forget to click on our enemy. Make sure to give him a knockback force. Let's just try 10 to start. Now when we get into combat and he attacks, there we go, I'm being pushed back. Of course, I still have no control and it lasts forever, but it's starting to look a little bit more like actual knockback. So now back in player movement, we just want to create a limited amount of time that the player loses control and is knocked back. So here we'll create a coroutine. We'll call it I enumerator knockback counter. So now in our knockback, after we've applied force to the player, we'll just say start coroutine, knockback counter. We'll begin the coroutine with a wait. Here we just type yield or stop, and we have it return a new wait for seconds. In these brackets, you could put any number you like. Let's just put one for the moment. And so we'll wait one second before running the next line, which we'll just set is knocked back equal to false, which will give our player control back. The other thing I'm going to do here is just set our rigid body's velocity to be equal to vector2.0. This will just effectively give him a snappy stop at the end of the knockback time, which will look really nice. Now finally, we don't want every enemy to deal one second worth of knockback. We want to give our enemies the ability to stun the player for different amounts of time. So let's make it so that our knockback takes in another value. Let's call this one a float called stun time. We'll then make sure that our coroutine also gets that information, stun time, 
and that it's ready to receive that information. So we'll type float stun time. And finally, one last stun time in our amount of time we're going to wait. Now we'll just quickly head over to our enemy where below knockback force will create a public float. Let's just call this one stun time and then make sure that we pass that information along. Now, for now, I'm just going to click on my player and give him a bunch of extra health so that I can test and not die after three hits. I'm also going to set my enemy's stun time to half a second, which is a little dramatic, but it'll work. Now, when we get into test, you'll notice that the enemy is knocking us back. Half a second is a fair bit of time, but afterwards, I do get control back, and also we get that nice snappy stop at the end of the knockback. Now, our numbers can use a little tweaking, but more importantly, you'll notice that I'm often taking double damage, one when I touch the enemy and another when he hits me. So let's quickly fix that. Now the reason for that double damage is just due to this on collision enter method, which you may want if you have some enemies or objects that deal damage on touch. However, now that our enemy attacks, we really don't need this here. So we can just delete it altogether. Problem solved. And just before we test this, let's set his stun time to just 0.2 and give him a double knockback for us. Let's do 20. Now when we get in game, there we go, much better. I'm now only being damaged once when he actually swings at me and I'm getting a much snappier looking knockback. At this point, just two problems remain. One is you may have noticed that sometimes I get really close and he doesn't attack right away. That's just because he has a two second attack cooldown, which is probably a little more dramatic than we need. And you can probably make that more like one second. Additionally, you'll notice that my dodging isn't quite working right. Sometimes when I dodge out of the way, the enemy just sort of stutters, not completing his attack before swinging at me. Let's fix that. Now the reason for those stuttering attacks is in the enemy movement script, just down in our check for player method. This is where we determine whether the enemy should be attacking, chasing, or idling. And the problem right now is simply that when he starts an attack, he immediately notices, if the player moves, that the player is now out of range and he switches to chase mode. We want him to finish his attack first. We can just simply add after checking the attack range and enemy state does not equal the attacking state. That way he will only switch to chase once he's finished attacking. And with that, we're ready to test. Back in Unity, I'm just gonna go to my enemy combat and change his weapon range to about 0.8 so that it's a little easier for the player to dodge. Now, when we get in the game, the enemy is capable of dealing damage in the direction we want. However, if the player's quick enough, we can invoke the attack and then get out of the way and the enemy will actually finish attacking. All right, we've got knockback. I think next up, we need to get our player actually able to fight back. Till then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. If you've been enjoying the series, please be sure to like, subscribe, or just leave a comment down below to let me know. Until next time, cheers.